What's up everybody, my name is Ernesto Medina and as you see I'm driving, I'm going to the beach right now so this might not look like what it's supposed to look like but this video is about finals week in architecture school. Oh my god, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. I started filming a few days ago some stuff that I was doing for the final. Now I'm going to the beach, then tomorrow, and tonight I'm gonna be working in school and then I wanna film the final for you. I just wanna get everything filmed for you guys so that you guys get a good idea of what it's like to be a student for architecture during finals week in like basically two of the hardest classes that you can take in architecture school, which is IBS and comprehensive. I should be more responsible than I'm mean right now by going to the beach, but it is what it is. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Okay, so basically I'm already back here in school. That last video that you guys saw was yesterday in um, on my way to the beach. Right now it's Monday, my final is tomorrow, and I'm here with Adri, and we basically trying to like finish all of our work. I have my small model back here, but I still have to build a bigger model, which is a sectional model, and basically that's what I'm trying to do here. I have moved my, my 3D model from I have my 3D model from Revit into Rhino in order to do the laser profile just because it's easier for me here. If you guys are not interested in this part of the video, you can go ahead and skip to minute 952. That's where the rest of the video is going to continue to go on. So making sure they're not overlap overlapping each other and I'm just going to go ahead and use project to see plane. But yeah, basically the, the hardest part of making a laser profile is how tedious it is and how many steps you have to go you have to go through. Right now here I realized that the, all these lines that are showing up on the make 2D are lines that I don't want because once I send it to the laser cutter, it, it just means that it's going to cut those lines. So you have to go through every single line and make sure that you want it there because then if at the end it just cuts everything, then it will make no sense. So the steps that I'm doing now is I'm trying to figure out which beams I need. And this, this was a waste of time completely because I ended up not doing the beams uh, from the laser cutter. I ended up doing them from wood sticks. Here I'm separating them, making sure they don't overlap each other. And now I'm just gonna go ahead, top view, make 2D. And I'm kinda gonna put it right where they go. And then I go ahead and I um, repeat the same steps for like the rest of the model. Now I'm doing the the floor slabs on the on the ceiling. Again, this is a really tedious process. I don't I don't like making this type of videos, but I'm, I've been asked a bunch of times to do it, so that's why I'm doing it for you guys. I'm readjusting here, trying to put everything as close as possible, because then you will see that you will um, end up moving all these drawings into like um, the sheets that you're gonna print uh, that you're gonna print, and you're gonna need as a, to be as no, economical with the space as you can. So right now I'm just doing the wall. This is one of the hardest parts in my opinion because you have to really uh, envision what you're gonna do when you're building the model. Which wall are you gonna be able to see most? Because a lot of walls don't show, so you don't wanna print those. You don't wanna print thicknesses. So you see me here um, getting rid of all the thicknesses. So I end up with just, um, just like flat planes and that's what I'm gonna cut and then the thickness the thickness is just gonna come from the material that, that you choose to print it to print it on. These voiceovers are extremely like annoying. I hate my voice. I feel like you guys are gonna get bored but again this is not my regular type of video. This is just for a lot of people that were asking for it and I'm sorry if I if I'm doing this voiceovers not the right way. I've I watched a lot of tutorials online and I I just feel like I'm one of those people right now and it, it's just uncomfortable. So now that I'm done taking all the pieces apart, I'm going to save it as a separate file. I'm going to open it as a clean file so that I can work easier with it and clean the line drawing before I send them into AutoCAD. That's what I'm doing right now, figuring out the scale because the model is at one fourth scale. And I ended up having to go back now to the previous file because I realized that I hadn't taken apart the main pieces, which is the, the floor of slabs. And my computer is a mess during finals. All the files are like in the wrong place. So that's what you're seeing in the screen. And now that I have um done that then i scale everything to the right scale to one fourth and then i start uh, creating the sheets that i'm going to be using to laser cut these are 18 by 32 which is the size of the bed of the laser cutter and then this is kind of like the tricky part because you have to get everything as close together as you can so that you um save space and you don't waste material and you save time in the laser cutter 
you wanna oh, everything that's the same material you wanna put it on the same sheet that's why you will see that maybe um, the mullions will be in the same sheet as the floor plans for example because maybe they're both gonna be out of shipboard or out of museum board and here I'm trying to figure out what to do with the beams because I already told you I ended up not cutting them this is I feel like when I decided I wasn't going to because I just it just looked like a mess always want to try to go with that as least piece as possible you don't want to have 200 pieces and then not know which one is which once you cut them so that's what I was looking at here you see me trying to fit them like moving them once you start moving them that was it like you're not gonna know where they go you're not gonna know where they fit so here same process these are bigger pieces so if you move them it's not that big of a deal because you kind of know where they go and then you want to go ahead and try to put them together name maybe the material on the sheet is something that I do just to not um, lose control <laughs> when I have so many uh, sheets like this and then what you see me doing here I'm gonna try to put together lines you see whatever I see a long line that I can just put on top of each other I just do that because it's less lines that the laser cutter has to go over and it's just time that you're gonna save and then I just realized that I was missing the main <laughs> Part of the model which is the base which has the stairs embedded into it so I knew it was gonna be a hustle to 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 create a laser cut file for this piece so that's what you see me doing here I'm hiding all the stuff that I don't need and I'm taking out the pieces that I'm gonna have to cut for the stairs this is something that you have to do very exactly because if you don't then the stairs are not gonna fit the, the pieces are not gonna come together and you do not want to stare you do not want a staircase that doesn't look good and that's what you see me here using uh, a boolean command boolean command wasn't working again technical stuff so i ended up having to trim there's always a way around something trim wasn't working either because sometimes things do not align perfectly or don't touch each other so you're not going to be able to to do uh, a clean cut or a clean trim so i went ahead and i just did a profile of the of the column and i ended up using this to extrude another column that was actually cutting through it and then I used that to do a, a little co boolean command so you see me here I'm converting everything from from uh, from plane into curves because well that's what we need curves are lines um, we need curves in order to laser cut and that's what you see me doing here to do this I just select the the, the planes and I just press command duplicate border and I just take that border because all I need really is the border. I'm here fixing the steps, making sure all those columns are gonna fit in nicely when they punch through the step. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the current glass to draw my squares for my for the pieces that I'm gonna cut out of plexi that are gonna be the actual glass because this is just the mullions right now. So I'm gonna grab those rectangles and put them in a sheet by themselves. And those are gonna be my plexi pieces that I have to cut in a different laser cutter that cuts plexi once I am done with the file after a few hours I go ahead and I select only the cheese that I'm gonna print and then I save it as a DWG which is uh, an AutoCAD file and then I have to open that in AutoCAD that's what I'm doing right now and then on AutoCAD it's just making sure that everything has like a default like um, line weight there's no line weight I'm making sure that all the cut lines are gonna be red which is like the default color at the laser cutter at my school and then a blue layer just for those beams that I told you that I wanted to be drawn on the on the surface because you want those to score so the laser cutter has to know by by being a different color that it's just gonna be uh, a different power and it doesn't cut all the way through it everything that I live in white is something that I want the, the printer to ignore you see me that I'm gonna grab this beams now and I'm gonna make them blue for the scoring. There was a little hash that I also wanted the the printer to print and I went ahead and once I'm done with it I just export it and I save it as a PDF file and that's what I'm gonna open. I email it to myself so I can open it. So I'm finally laser cutting guys. I'm here at the lab. I didn't have an appointment because I missed it. I missed it yesterday. We're going to the beach, uh, but there was a spot and I was able to take it. Everything is coming out nicely. 
we see all the steps now being printed and this is the part that has the scoring so you guys can see the difference right now it's cutting so it's cutting through the whole material because I put the power for the color red to cut all the way through but this part is as you can see it's just a scoring so it's not cutting through it's just like a drawing on the surface of it so look at the little the little beans that we wanted to have everything's coming out nicely it's, just, it's like magic so it is time to build the model now it's all about taking the pieces apart make them fit one with each other and gluing everything um, there's always some small adjustments you have to make and alterations to make everything fit but like if you did the laser cut model um, right it, should, it shouldn't be that big of a deal here you see me building the base that last part that we fixed on the on the file and it's just about gluing everything maybe cutting a little corner but yeah this is gonna be the base and this is gonna be what's gonna support the whole the whole model so I have to make sure that I use a lot of glue so that this part is um, really strong here you see me trying to see uh, how to fix the columns I really like that the columns that I have bought were a little smaller than they were supposed to be but I ended up having to use those because it was really late at night and I couldn't go out and buy the right dimension this is some people's favorite part of like building a model or their favorite part of a project but honestly I don't enjoy building models it's not something I I like it. I, I, I enjoy the, the the part of the design better and the presentation and putting together the drawings and all of that. But anyways, here in, in a time lapse, it looks really nice and it looks uh, way easier than it actually is here. You see me putting the slabs um, after I already installed the 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 little beam looking like thingies. Here I'm trying to like set the the ceiling in place aligning it with the curtain wall and where the partition of those um, mullions is you see me using um zap a gap which is like this really strong like glue like sort of like crazy glue just because i don't have the patience i always recommend to use the other the other glue that you see at the end of the table which is like um either elmer's glue or the one that i have in this case which is um sobo glue but anyways, I'm using here the, the faster one and then you see me using a spray, which is uh, an accelerator. So it's even faster and that spray won't um, affect your model. It won't stain there or anything like that. I'm cutting here with the exacto knife some pieces of emollients that the laser cutter didn't cut all the way through because I didn't set the power right for that type of material. This is really annoying, but it happens to a lot of people all the time. So you kind of have to go through the through the cut with your own knife so you can take the piece out and then I realized with my dad that the columns were a little longer than I anticipated I didn't measure right so we had to involve a little bit of heavy machinery <laughs> my dad brought this tool that he has and then we used that to cut the the columns it was really nice that they were all helping me my cousin was helping me my dad was helping me and if I would have been alone at school, which I always, if that's how I build my models of school, I would have had to do it all by myself. And here's one of the ending touches of the model. I'm adding this um, grass looking like um, surface. A lot of professors don't like when you represent surface with green, but I thought it was really important for this project to, actu to actually show that. So I tried to find a green that was muted, that it wasn't too, too green. And it didn't take it away from the from the architecture of the model and then the, at the end I was just adding the small walls that you guys saw me cutting on the model they weren't sticking so I had to like put some glue and spray it a little bit but this is basically like the end of the of the building process of the model I was really happy it was about 12 a.m. and the next day was my presentation and I still had to go to sleep because I had to wake up early to do some drawings And this is the final um, part of the process. I am updating my boards. This ha I had already completed a week before, just to not leave it for last minute. And now I'm here, I'm just um, fixing the names, adding some last minute details. I'm using InDesign, where basically I just have placeholders and I just bring in 
linked files like either pdfs or, or photoshop files and that what this helps me do is that if i make a change in a specific file the link just automatically updates in the board so i don't have to be like redoing things um or anything like that this is my favorite part of the process creating the boards if you guys are interested in this let me know in the comments below please and i will totally make a video uh, on a future project about how to how to create how to design a board so that's basically it. i was done i was adding some last minute images and then i go ahead and exported it this was a four page uh, presentation and you can see them here aligned next to each other and that's how they will be hung in the wall Alrighty, so I have finally pinned up. This is my friend Lorena. This is my board over here, this four, and those are my models. The lighting is awful, but you can, you can see. And then we have everybody else. She's practicing her presentation. <laughs> this is my friend Patty over here. This is her model. Beautiful, look at the detail. That's our process models massing models everybody's pretty much been up we have 15 minutes so i'm just gonna go have something to eat so that i can present later